first speaker is Steve Carroll. Sir, you have five minutes. my neighbor across the street told me that him and his wife were attacked by three pit bulls. They tried to come in through the glass door twice. One of them was a massive, powerful male and two females. So let's get right to it. Here's a litany of what's been going on over the last six months with these three dogs. January 2018, Youngers were found guilty of dogs at large. August 2018, guilty of dogs at large. <coughs> October 12th was the attack on my neighbors. October 20th, three summonses issued by the magistrate. December 12th of 2018, the dogs were impounded. December 19th, the dogs are deemed dangerous. Owners of the dogs appealed the court hearing. March 22nd, 2019, the appeal is heard and the dogs were unbelievably returned to the owners. During the time that they were in power, the taxpayers were take, taken for $4,300. Now, there's plenty of room to blame. I'm not pointing one finger at any one individual. This should have never gotten to this point. There's plenty of room to blame. The judge, the city, and the owners. Now, the owners will not answer their door. They have played the game, they have played the system, and they have dodged. We have three pit bulls, the large male capable of killing, someone. They demonstrated a pack mentality. What prompted this was last Thursday when I came home, 30 minutes earlier, I saw animal control in my neighborhood. The two of those dogs either were let out or got out, attacked a dog near the owner's home. Enough. Enough. I'm not here. I'm representing Wise Beach Civic League, I'm the president. Enough. I'm not here to hear excuses. I don't want to hear explanations. I want action tonight. I want you to get your collective heads together, direct the city attorney to go tomorrow morning and take out a warrant to have that place searched, have those dogs seized, and destroyed. End this right now. Okay. Animal control <coughs> has done something, okay? but this needs a concentrated effort from everybody. And it's not been done, it hasn't been properly coordinated. Okay? It needs to be taken care of immediately. Because I'm going to tell you something, I don't need to say it, but I'm going to say it. If those dogs come into my neighborhood and they threaten anybody else, if I get wind that they threaten anybody else, y'all are going to have caterpillars crawling up your tree. Okay? This has got to stop. This is irresponsible. If a city inspector comes to my yard and I've got a patch of grass 10 inches tall, I'm going to get sighted. We've got three dogs that have repeatedly threatened people. I've talked to some of these people personally. They have threatened people. They are vicious. They are powerful. And they are deadly. Stop it now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next speaker is Michael Ford. And, sir, you have five minutes. Good evening, City Council, Mayor, and, and concerned citizens. I was at the public works session earlier, and, like, I believe it was Bill Moody who passed, who tried to like, well yeah, well yeah, like they passed this thing so that, that no 
non-agenda publics, or non-agenda speakers, it wouldn't be televised. I mean, I mean, I guess I might have a few ideas of why they did that, but I don't think it's a good idea because there's a lot of like intelligent things that need to be said by non-agenda speakers, and they have issues that are just <coughs> just as important as what's on the agenda. So like, I find the non-agenda speakers to be thought-provoking and interesting. So I think everybody watching at home and on the internet would agree that they, they like to see that. So, and, and it does kind of harm our image if we're not letting people see what the people really think because it's not transparent. It's not, it's not transparent and it's kind of not inclusive either like if we don't show what they have to say. So yeah, I think you all kind of just rushed into making that decision. You didn't put a whole lot of thought into that one. So, so yeah, I would, I think it would be a great idea to just keep showing the non-agenda items. Like, I mean, I mean, I know we all want to go to sleep. Like, we don't want to like stay here forever, but I mean, it's going to be on the internet so people can watch it. And like, there might be somebody looking for someone that they can help. Like, if, they, if they'd be able to help one of those non-agenda speakers, if they hear their problem and they see, hey, I can do something about that. And yeah, I gotta agree with the guy who was talking about the dogs earlier. Like, I don't think I've run into those dogs, but I do see stray dogs on a regular basis. And they get on my nerves, because like you said, they can be dangerous. Not all of them are friendly pet types. And yeah, yeah if one of those dogs tried to attack me, I'd probably try to kill it too. Yeah, you, you all did do really good by voting to to allow that use permit for the apartments. That was a good that was a good vote. I was glad to see that it passed unanimously. So I think that's all I have to say right now. So thanks for letting me speak. Hope you all have a good night. Thank you, sir. The next speaker is Gervonius Brown, and I apologize if I mispronounce your name. Not a problem. I have a problem pronouncing it too. Sir, you've got five minutes. We'll get to the next. Yes. Mayor, uh, row 7 Council, and other administrators of the city of Portsmouth. Uh, my name is Gerald C. Brown, senior, and I am a proud. 1996 retiree starting with the Police Department. I've been involved in law enforcement for approximately 45 years. I'm here tonight on behalf of the Northern Police Officers Association of Portsmouth Incorporated. And the purpose is that during my law enforcement career, it always has been better than me about rule of law and due process. So I'm here this evening to speak to you or give you a statement from our organization regarding what we feel, feel is a <coughs> involuntary resignation of Chief Chapman. And I'll read my statement to you. It has come to our attention that Simon Lisa posted a letter on Facebook regarding the firing of Police Chief Tony Chapman that was supposedly signed by the portion of Minority Police Officers Association. We want to make it clear that this letter did not come from our association. We are not familiar, affiliated, associated 
or any way connect with that the organization. The Minority Resource Association of Portsmouth Incorporated was founded in 1988. We had the utmost respect and confidence in Police Chief Chapman. We believed that her performance and the changes she was making for the Portsmouth Police Department was having a positive influence in our communities. We believe that the city has suffered a great loss by fire from Chief Chapman. If the letter posted in the Virginia Pilot from her is in any way true, we also support having an internal investigation done by council regarding the actions of our city manager. We appreciate you giving us the opportunity to give you our thoughts in regards to the termination of Chief Chapman. And if you have any questions for me, I think we're more than happy to try to address those if you need me. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Our last speaker is Teresa Smith. Maybe no problem. citizen and a member of the Old Town South Community League, I would like to express my dismay at the actions of our city manager. I am embarrassed that once again, we're in the news for something negative and as of today, something the FBI is investigating. As a citizen of this city, I am tired of us being in a posture of having to pay out money because of poor decisions made by our leadership monies that should be used to fully fund our school budget. You've said that this is a personnel issue and you are unable to discuss the matter. The city manager does not answer to us, but you answer to us. As citizens, we request the following information. One, when was the last performance evaluation of our police chief? Two, if she received an unsatisfactory performance evaluation, did it result in her receiving a written and signed corrective action plan? Three, if her dismissal was not a result of normal personnel practices, then we want to know what was so egregious that would result in that type of action. Chief Chapman states that her dismissal was a complete surprise. If this is correct, we are demanding that council take action, immediate action to investigate this matter and hold all parties responsible for their actions and give a formal report to the citizens. Enough is enough. We expect transparency and answers. We will be watching to see how the matter is resolved, both collectively and individually. Don't let your actions, or lack thereof, result in a vote of no confidence in you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. That's our last speaker. This meeting is adjourned.